Right. So these are our dashboards. Uh, for those of you that have dynamic pricing already activated, you will see a new menu item here on the left hand side it's called dynamic pricing. Um, I'm not showing, in the, not showing the landing page, but basically the landing page is just a button and some text that we have there on the value proposition. You click on the button and we'll start the process of gathering the data. This takes some time. I've seen already some questions there. Why is, why is my, <laughs> my dynamic pricing not activated? Well, it's a lot of data that we need to process, right? To provide all these recommendations. So it's not going to happen immediately. <laughs> it takes some time. But once it's ready, we will send you a notification. And then you can go to this screen and see all of your listings and the initial pricing recommendations that the engine has elaborated for you. So what we'll see here is all this list, all this table, uh, a few things here that you need to understand, base rates. So these are actual, uh, the actual recommended average prices for the next 365 days. So that's actually a calculation that the engine has already done for you. And for each listings, this would be the average that it thinks is appropriate based on the data. As I mentioned before, before even activated, you can go and preview. You can preview 30 days of data, right? So you can preview 30 days of prices. Let's imagine that, okay, I'm super happy with this. You might be. You can just kind of click here and activate and that'll be it. That's all you need to do. We immediately populate the prices in the calendar and those prices will be sent to you, the channels as well. But again, the recommendation is of course, but again, no one actually knows better your properties and your markets than yourself, I would say. So you have to you have to have the tools to decide on this strategy. And I recommend you decide on this strategy as well, right? We have different options for optimizing the strategy. Actually, two options. One, you can have a data-driven rates approach, which is basically you allow the machine to make decisions with different level of risk. The different level of risk is conservative, recommended, or aggressive. Conservative would be lower the risk, so I maximize my occupancy. In the risk, I mean, maybe I'm talking here a little bit more stock market than, than dynamic pricing, but basically uh, provide me the the best price to maximize occupancy. If you want to, if you think you're in an area or, or that you can be a little bit more aggressive and push towards revenue versus occupancy, then you would choose an aggressive um, approach to this. In general, the default uh, and our recommendation, if you're not in the knowledge of those or you haven't decided on which approach to take, is to leave the recommended option, which automatically takes the best of both worlds, okay? And provides the best recommendation uh, possible, trying to maximize occupancy around. All right, so once you decided that, you can still have some more controls uh, to make sure you are within your comfort zone, right? So we have embedded some tools as well already uh, in the product to avoid underselling, but we'll give you some more control here. And one of them is setting minimum price. So setting a minimum price means that for my listing, for instance, I think I click on the first listing, I don't want my pricing to go or my listing to go below $250, right? So whatever recommendation the engine gives, it will never go below $250. The same you can say for maximum price. You can set a maximum price. So um, if you think uh, over a period of time or in a particular area, you uh, if you go too high or the pricing goes too high, you're going to be uh, run up run over by competitors because you're not on, you're not in market, then you can set a maximum price. And in that case would be something like, I don't know, I'm making up these numbers, please don't quote me on here. So I selected my data-driven rates with a recommended approach. I want the best of both worlds. I want to um, have occupancy. I also uh, um, optimize for revenue. And I don't want it to go below $250 and I don't want it to be above 550 because I know if I go above that rate, I will not sell. So I will save these settings and that's it. If I'm happy, I click activate and we immediately populate the prices in the calendar. Actually, it takes a couple of minutes, so I cannot show it directly, but it will populate the price in the calendar and it will we will update the channels accordingly. There is a another approach you can take to your pricing strategy, which is the total control approach, as I call it, which is basically the manual overrides. If I want to, be, to put this... Um, in or give you an analogy, what do those two things mean? The data-driven approach and the manual override is it's if you use the manual overrides, you basically imagine you're 
uh, you put a car on a highway, right, with five lanes in the highway. Typical American thing. I don't have it in Spain, but, you know, I drove in one of those, one in my life, and I was very scary. If you want to drive your car in one lane, right, in that highway, you use, and you don't want to move from that lane, then you use the manual override. You use the uh, the complete control settings. So that will mean that the algorithm would continue providing pricing recommendations based on your on your base rates, but it will ensure that you do not move away from that lane. So it will keep in that lane. On the data-driven approach, on the contrary, you're letting the engine decide on which lane your car is going to be. But you still have the tools available for you to control whether uh, the car doesn't go into the curb or it doesn't go into another car. So again, let's go back to Earth really well. Um, if I want to set the base rate here, it's as simple as doing this. I'm making up these prices. I still can control my base minimum price and I still can control my maximum price. Maximum price is not, it's optional, okay? We'll definitely recommend setting a minimum price to avoid underselling, but maximum price is optional as well. So I set this up and I can have different strategies from different distance. So you can also, uh, it might be in different locations. You have all the knowledge there for you. Click on activate and that's it. Uh, when you review prices or if you know there's going to be a specific date that you check and maybe the the, uh, the algorithm is not providing the right recommendation, then you can go into the calendar and override that price. So basically go into the calendar select a listing in the monthly one or in the in the multi-calendar one. And let's say this one, for instance, is 100. This is not activated for dynamic pricing, but uh, imagine this was. So 400, this is my price. The algorithm will not take into consideration this day anymore. So it stays on the price that you put. You overread uh, over it in, in the calendar. So that's it. So you, if we go back to the presentation. All right. So what is coming up? Um, this is the first version of dynamic pricing. And we, the team is already working on on giving you more ability to control and make decisions before actually activating the pricing, right? So we're going to give you a two-year price preview for full control before syncing prices and allow you to, you know, optimize prices in that calendar as well. We're going to expose for you far future premium settings, far future um, if I explain this for anyone that doesn't know what that means, it's basically a kind of a control tool to not price too high in the future. So basically the algorithm creates or adds a little bit of a premium, not too, not too high, for very far dates in the future where there is not a lot of data to make a good recommendation or the best recommendation there. And this is to stop from underselling. Then you will have some revenue management tools as well here. Last minute discount settings, seasonality adjustments, we can factor settings as well. So you can also establish your strategy in more fine detail and you can tailor it to your needs. And then also one important thing is managing uh, occupancy through gap night settings. So all of that is going to come very soon. So uh, I think we're going to have another webinar for that. I'm sure we're going to have another webinar for that. So uh, keep tuned. That's it. That's all I have to show today. Thank you guys.